In this lecture, we are going to discuss the mechanism of action of the isoniazid, which is actually one of the non-beta lactams. Let's start our discussion from the very first point, why the isoniazid is placed in the non-beta lactams antibiotics. Remember, we have two types of the cell wall inhibitors antibiotics. Cell wall inhibitors are actually of two types. Number one, beta lactams. Number two, non-beta lactams. Now, those which have beta lactam ring, they're actually placed in the beta lactams antibiotics, like penicillins, cephalosporins, carbapenems, monobactams. They all have beta lactam ring. That's why they are placed in the beta lactams antibiotics. And we have another class where we are placing the isoniazid and some other. So they are actually known as non-beta lactams because they don't have the beta lactam ring in their structure. And they both, remember, the beta lactams plus non-beta lactams, they both have got a single important function. That is, they are inhibiting the cell wall synthesis. Okay, cell wall inhibitors. Now, let's proceed to the discussion. Isoniazid is shortly written as INH. Now, what is the mechanism of action? We got the very important point that uh, these non-beta lactams and beta lactam, they are actually responsible to inhibit the cell wall synthesis. Now, the question is how the isoniazid is doing this job. I mean, how the isoniazid is going to inhibit the cell wall synthesis. Remember, these are actually the mycobacterium antibiotics. So now how they are going to do their job? Very simple, just concentrate. Mycobacterium actually needs the mycolic acid for the cell wall synthesis. And this mycolic acid is actually synthesized by mean of an enzyme that is mycolic acid synthase. And this is actually composed of two enzymes. Number one, acyl carrier protein reductase which is shortly written as INHA and the next one is beta ketoacyl synthase which is shortly written as KASA so by mean of these two particular enzymes the mycobacterium is actually producing the mycolic acid and this mycolic acid when it is produced then it plays a very important role in the synthesis of the cell wall so now we want to inhibit the synthesis of the cell wall of mycobacterium. How would we inhibit? By means of this isoniazid, we will inhibit this synthesis. How? Like, very simple. When we indicate this isoniazid, this will enter the mycobacterium. Uh, this is actually a prodrug. So, by means of the CAT gene, which is actually a mycobacterial catalase enzyme, which is also known as bacterial catalase peroxidase. So, by means of this enzyme, the, this isoniazid, which is a prodrug, this will be converted into active, that is isoniazid active. Then this isoniazid active, it has got a very important site of action, that is to inhibit the beta ketoacyl synthase. And in the meanwhile, it is inhibiting this acyl carrier protein reductase. In short, KSA and INHA. These two are then inhibited. So when these are inhibited, they were actually what they were mycolic acid synthase enzymes so they were responsible to produce the mycolic acid now there is no more production of the mycolic acid and if there is no mycolic acid available then it's obvious the cell wall won't be synthesized so like this we actually inhibited the cell wall synthesis remember one very important point our this antibiotic that is isoniazid which is one of the non beta lactams and our other beta lactams these non beta lactams and beta lactams they all have got two very important functions they show bactericidal and bacteriostatic actions now when these are supposed to show the bactericidal action and the bacteriostatic action very simple point and simple logic when the bacteria are actually in the process of growth when they are rapidly dividing in that condition, if we indicate these antibiotics, some of the beta lactams and non beta lactams, they will actually do the lysis, means they will show the bactericidal action. And when these bacteria are in rest, they are not dividing. In that condition, if we indicate our beta lactams and non beta lactams, they will actually show the bacteriostatic action. So that's it, simple regarding them. Now let's have a short understanding that how the uh, antibiotics like uh, this one isoniazid is showing bactericidal mechanism of action very simple here we got the bacterium so if there is no cell wall available what will happen then the fluid surrounding this bacterium will diffuse in and as this fluid enters this will exert the osmotic pressure 
after the accumulation of the fluid inside the bacterium this fluid will exert the osmotic pressure on the cell membrane now this cell membrane has got no any structural support you guys know that the structural support is provided by the cell wall so now there is no any support available for this particular uh, bacterium so what will happen this membrane will no longer withstand against this pressure so the result will be the lysis this membrane will lyse and like this our these isoniazid are showing the bacteroidal mechanism of action so that's it regarding the mechanism of action if still you have any confusion anywhere drop that confusion in the shape of question in the comment box we'll come for the answers thank you for watching